Welcome to the Wiss Mama Bear Podcast, episode 33. I'm your host, Sarah Yacoub. Today's topic, investing in Wisconsin. Good morning. I hope this finds everyone well. Today, we're talking about Iceland. Why? Well, because in addition to being a beautiful, fascinating country, they took radical action to turn things around, and it worked. In 1998, 42% of 15 and 16 year old teenagers reported being drunk in the last 30 days. In 2016, that number fell all the way down to 5%. In 1998, 23% reported smoking cigarettes, and that number fell to 3% in 2016. In 1998, 17% of 15 and 16 year old teenagers reported having ever smoked pot. As of 2016, that number fell to 7%. So where is this magic wand and how can we in the United States, or rather Wisconsin, get one? Turns out that magic wand isn't magic at all, but rather a function of good public policy, smart investments, and a whole lot of common sense. On January 19th, 2007, journalist Emma Young published a piece on this very topic in The Atlantic. It is from that piece that I pulled the statistics just stated. Because any summary I could give would not do her piece justice, I highly recommend the read to anyone listening. She incorporated the perspectives of psychologists and examined why young people use and abuse drugs in the first place. In a nutshell, it's a combination of access, chasing highs, escaping reality, and or just a function of trying to cope with life. So what did Iceland do? From a legislative standpoint, they legislated age limits for purchasing alcohol and tobacco, They banned alcohol and tobacco advertising and passed curfew laws for youth. The government provided educational seminars for parents providing tools to better connect with their children. But at the heart of all of these efforts was significant investment in youth sports and activities. Whether it be music, art, dance, chess, or organized sports, suddenly the socioeconomic status of children stopped being a barrier for kids to participate in that which they not only loved, but that serves as an outlet to the many challenges of growing up. As a result of this investment, Iceland has seen their children grow stronger and their community healthier. Seems like something that could work wonders in the United States, Wisconsin, and particularly rural Wisconsin, right? Well, not so fast. What is one major barrier to seeing something like that happen here? Enter the Tavern League. The Tavern League joins the WMC as one of the dark money special interests pulling the puppet strings of Republican politicians in Wisconsin. They are the reason our stupid war on cannabis, a non-toxic, non-lethal plant, continues even as we become an island among states in Canada who have legalized and allowed the economic and socioeconomic relief to their people. The Tavern League has such a chokehold on Wisconsin that it would be like if they represented Major League Baseball and were so threatened by any loss of business that they outlawed any other sports. Ridiculous, right? As alcohol and the abuse of alcohol continues to cost taxpayers of Wisconsin in ways we can quantify and in ways in which we will never be able to assign a quantifiable value for things like fetal alcohol syndrome, intimate partner terrorism, suicide, murder. Despite all the harm, the money and power of the Tavern League is such that it doesn't matter. As long as we keep drinking, come hell or high water, the Tavern League is happy, so long as they continue to line their pockets. I have to believe that if enough parents from both sides of the aisle stood up and demanded better for our kids, and correspondingly our society, that we could get it done. After all, who doesn't want stronger children and or a healthier dignity? So what's the problem? The gluttonous fat cat politicians who toe the line for the Tavern League are never going to come out and announce that they are puppets of special interests who put the people, the children of Wisconsin, and the overall well-being of our community a very distant second to keeping the Tavern League happy. Instead, they'll give us false narrative talking points designed to sound good for an audience they count on to not dig any further. Instead, They exploit identity politics and count on their ability to scare their base into continuing to vote for them by misusing big scary words like, wait for it, socialism. With few exceptions, that game plan continues to work for them. The combination of money, 
and personally interested persons willing to lie for folks like the Tavern League or the politicians who kiss their rear end is powerful, and it's not something that gets talked about in local newspapers. It's an undercurrent that dark money special interests and corrupt politicians ride and enjoy while pretending it is not actually there. It is our own proverbial fight club. If you mention it, nobody will actually talk to you about it. It is that undercurrent that is among the reasons this podcast exists. The hope is that the more we, the people, can start to see it, the more we can stop being played by it. As much as it feels like the divide in our community is Republicans versus Democrats, or even Trump supporters versus not Trump supporters, it's really not. Or rather, that divide is shallow in comparison and orchestrated, or better said, exploited. The real divide is between corrupt politicians and we the people, the interests of the community. At the end of the day, we all want to feel safe in our homes, to be able to protect and provide for our children, and to be able to live a good life with hard work. As long as corrupt politicians and dark money special interests have us pinned against one another, we can never band together to fight the true evil, which is their corruption and willingness to use their power for their own personal enrichment at the expense of us all, our children our economy, our future. Are we going to agree on everything? Of course not. And that's a good thing. While we're conditioned to see that as a bad thing, I'm challenging us to shift our perspective to be able to explain how it's actually a strength, an asset, to differ in our top priorities and ideas about how to solve complex problems. Complex problems require diverse perspectives, we would be equipped to solve next to nothing were we to all think or value different issues the same. Public policy is an exercise in balancing interests. Good public policy maximizes the benefit to the most interests while minimizing negative or unintended consequences. Nothing about how gluttonous fat cat Republican politicians in Wisconsin govern is good public policy. We, the people, suffer accordingly. Is it that Republican political ideology is inherently flawed? No, not at all. The issue is the leadership that currently defines the Wisconsin Republican Party. Because there is no tolerance for dissent, because Republican politicians are not free to stand up to entities like the Tavern League or the WMC without swiftly losing their post, we end up with a very corrupt set of Republican politicians in Wisconsin. Take Shannon Zimmerman, someone who is potentially exposed to over 300 years of state prison and or $1 million in fines for his election and voter fraud, and that's not even including the restitution that he would owe should he ever be held accountable for his crimes. He is going into his fifth year of mass-scale felony fraud and is only able to do so because he enjoys the insulation provided by the Wisconsin Republican Party and corrupt Republican politicians. Think of the leverage they have over Shannon. You see, it's not just that he doesn't live in the district. It's that in doing so, he has to commit a whole lot of fraud to make it work for him. Which means, he is now at the mercy of every corrupt politician who knows and enables his secret, who knows and enables his crimes. We the people cannot trust Shannon to do the right thing or to stick up for we the people because his very freedom depends on keeping those who insulate him from accountability on his mass scale crimes happy. As I reflect on the point of these podcasts, I circle back to my role in this community as a mother, someone who is fiercely protective of my children, someone who wants to see not only my own children, but all children thrive. As long as this is where I call home, I will work to see our community thrive. Whether it's immediately apparent or not, we are all connected in some way. Doing better for one child means doing better for all children. Doing better for one family means improvements for our community as a whole. This podcast is intended to facilitate the conversations needed to break down the barriers to not only wellness, but to political sanity within our community. Rather than be exploited by the same old corruption and dynamics of any given election season, we the people can rise up and demand better. We can have integrity in leadership and accountability in government. There is more that unites us than divides us. When we realize that, we the people have the power to do better. Episode 34 tomorrow. See you there.